have been well trained. No, you don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, it's do not. Me. I'm not afraid. There is no threat. Hello and welcome to the Chance Cube coverage of the 2018 World Championship for Star Wars Destiny. My name is Todd and in this video we'll be watching a battle between David on the left running Elite Maz, Elite Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Jack on the right running Elite Ezra, Elite Sabine. Both of these decks being very popular in the current meta, being well represented anywhere from the lowest uh, and local tournament to the highest caliber of World Championships as we see here today. Now, if you are having a little bit of deja vu, that's because we did see both of these decks face off against each other in the top table of the previous day's event. Both of these decks having, uh, I believe, gone undefeated in the previous day. Uh, not super surprised to see them come again uh, in the second day. And I'm sure uh, these decks were very well represented on the second day and again on the third. Both of these decks running the same battlefields uh, my personal favorite, the Outer Rim Outpost, gain a resource and draw an extra card. Drawing a card, even though after, you're, uh, after you've claimed the battlefield, drawing a card isn't as powerful as it is during the game, but getting that extra card, seeing, hey, oh, I drew a card that I can't really use in this matchup, I'm going to go ahead and discard it so I can get to the cards that I do need, being able to kind of rifle through your deck and kind of... Uh, muddle your way through there trying to get the uh, cards that you desperately need in order to take out the other player Now in the matchup that we saw in the previous video uh, Sabine Ezra was able to take Obi Maz out of the game uh, Maz had a little bit of trouble rolling so we'll kind of see what happens here in this particular matchup and see uh, see what happens uh, if uh, David on the left here knew anything about the uh, matchup yesterday, I'm sure he was sitting down across from another Sabine Ezra player and going, oh no, <laughs> I've got a lot to, I've got a lot to prove here. But hey, no worries. Uh, many players are able to come back from even a single or even two losses uh, in the early, uh, early rounds of the championship to come back and uh, eventually make it to the top tables even. We'll just kind of have to see how it goes. So in their opening hands, uh, Sabine Ezra uh, did have a second chance at one point, but not really looking for it early game. Uh, definitely something you want to try to draw into a little bit later in the game. Try to get those Sabine uh, weapons out as soon as you can, and then, uh, and then getting the second chance later to overwrite the weapons after you've used them. Draws us another second chance, so he's going to be hanging on to that one during the game, I believe. He's going to probably feel out, see how much damage comes through uh, in the first round or two, and if needed, get that second chance on Sabine uh, as early as he can. So it looks like uh, Obi-Wan Maz winning the battlefield and then getting the shields uh, by taking Jack's battlefield. This is uh, already turning out a little bit different than uh, the previous game that we watched, Sabine Ezra having won the roll off in the other round. So Obi-Wan being able to get an additional shield each round and already starting with two is uh, going to make a big deal. So uh, while Sabine is looking for those ambush weapons to be able to put on Sabine, the uh, Obi-Wan player is also looking for weapons to be able to get those out on uh, Obi-Wan. Both of these players are going to be using their big character, the Obi-Wan Kenobi and Sabine, to carry most of the weapons while their additional character, Maz and Ezra, being used as the supports. Uh, if you did watch our other video, then you will also have uh, heard me say before that uh, if you are able to knock out the large character on either side, my understanding uh, is that, uh, in my experience, is that uh, Maz is able to carry the game if she can get a couple of weapons on here on her while Ezra has a little bit more of a struggle because Obi-Wan Obi Maz's speed comes from Maz whereas Sabine Ezra's speed really comes from Sabine uh, already I think I see a little bit of a difference here on the Obi Maz player playing Maz's goggles on Maz unfortunately not rolling 
uh, any of the focus sides that he was probably looking for, but he is showing three resources out on the table. During this first round, if he's able to go ahead and uh, ramp up really good with those resources, but he decides not to, it's not a bad, not a bad call. Hopefully being able to resolve uh, or gain the battlefield, maybe he's hoping to reroll into some extra damage there. Sabine doing the Sabine things, getting the X8 sniper rifle on her. And Ezra also showing some damage, and it looks like we're going to be seeing a 5 damage right off the bat. And going for Maz, it looks like. Getting rid of the speed from the Obi Maz player. Uh, definitely not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. Like I said, the speed of that deck really comes from Maz. Having her goggles out there that has a 2 focus side on it, allowing so much ha to happen here. All right, so we do get a Maz special, a Maz's goggles special, a Maz focus, range, and then a shield on Obi-Wan Kenobi. We've got a running over interference from the Sabine character. We're going to do a Loth Cat and Mouse. Oh, that was really funny. Uh, it looks like Jack kind of showed uh, the other card in his hand to David <laughs> while he was showing him the Loth Cat and Mouse. Uh, so that was, that was kind of fun. Uh, looks like he did uh, was able to... Oh, actually, it was a resolve. Uh, Maz resolved the Maz's goggles to get rid of the Loth Cat and Mouse. Oh, I thought he was playing it. I lost a little bit of track there. Uh, Maz's goggles, the special was saying, uh, look at your opponent's hand and discard an event from it. There is no restriction to cost. So uh, a lot of people are used to uh, friends in low places that is an event costing one or less. But Maz's goggles, that is any event in their hand. So I know if you go up against battle droid decks, you can get rid of those really, uh, really expensive cards like the Endless Ranks to bring them back. You can get rid of so many powerful events that a lot of other cards just and uh, dice just can't get rid of. So kind of a cool use for Maz's Goggles. Uh, we were able to get an extra three damage uh, off of the Obi-Wan die. So even, even though Maz is kind of on the chopping block there, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Still doing uh, some good damage. It looks like both of these uh, both of these players are targeting the opposite character that we saw in the previous round. So this game, uh, all bets are off as far as uh, as far as what uh, what happened from the last round to this round. Uh, we see the easy pickings, the entangle, and the another hasty exit coming from the Sabine Ezra player. Who? That's some really good removal. Uh, Hasty Exit, I think, is such a good card. It's a free card allowing, to get, allowing you to get rid of any die showing any amount of damage. It can get rid of the 5 for 1 on an ATSD. It can get rid of the 4 range on a Falcon. It can get rid of a Rocket Launcher, no matter uh, any of the damage sides that it rolls. Uh, Hasty Exit is such a super powerful card. Hidden Blaster coming in for Sabine again. We'll see if uh, he's able to uh, remember the Hidden Blaster's ability to remove a shield. Uh, it is a May ability. It is not a Force. Ah, oh, he does remember. These, these guys are pros. What am I saying? Of course they're going to remember. Uh, Sabine, however, not remembering that she has guns. Rolling some shields. Uh, but, oh my goodness, we are going to never tell me the odds with running interference. So Sabine is going to be able to focus to 9 damage. Oh, sorry. Just 8. Only 8. How silly of me. It's only 8 damage that, that she's able to do. Now, uh, what do you do as the obi Maz player? Do you roll in Maz, try to get one less activation out of her? Because Sabine is able to knock her out right now. Or could just do the 8 damage straight into Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think you do activate Maz just in case. Try to get that uh, little bit of activation out of her. Gets a focus on the goggles and a one range. Uh, kind of a rough call. Uh, the range is nice, but the focus can kind of give you whatever you want. Uh, I don't think taking a shield would do much unless you took the shield onto Obi-Wan Kenobi trying to get extra stuff on him. He does the one damage. And not really a reason to uh, resolve the focus. So going to kill Maz and then do three to Obi-Wan Kenobi. So we are seeing uh, dead Maz early in the game. Uh, Obi-Wan sitting doesn't have an upgrade yet, but that's not to say that David doesn't have an upgrade in his hand ready to go. 
Uh, I definitely do see an ancient lightsaber in there and Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber itself. He does play the ancient, and I think there may actually be two ancients in his hand right now. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi not out of this game at all. Now, Sabine looks like uh, just got a uh, five damage on her. So Obi-Wan can uh, definitely knock her out if he can roll the damage. Uh, get some resources. Not exactly what you want to see. Uh, trying to knock out Sabine as quick as you can. Sabine having zero resources and ha already having overwritten means that if uh, David can reroll into those uh, damage sides, he's going to be able to take out the Sabine this round. That that's that's huge. If he can take out Sabine, get rid of that uh, extra blaster, all the speed. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi versus Ezra. Uh, I definitely have to give the props to uh, or the. Uh, the advantage to Obi-Wan. Now, unfortunately, Obi-Wan does not have resources, or he's got one resource, so if he rolls the three for one, he can pay for one of those sides. So that ancient lightsaber showing the uh, one uh, resource side, if you really are trying to get the Obi-Wan Kenobi dice to show the damage, uh, then I think you just leave the uh, ancient lightsaber and roll the Obi dice, but that's not what we're doing. We are going for max damage here. Unfortunately, Obi-Wan's dice is not cooperating right now. I'm uh, doing the discard to reroll. I think David sees that uh, Sabine has no ability to stay alive right now. Uh, no resources in hand means no hyperspace jump, no second chance. Uh, he did leave one die out there, which could be used for a loft cat if he's got another loft cat in his hand. Uh, he also, we know he has the hasty exit, so he could, uh, I think. I don't think we'll see a Sabine knocked out during this round. Uh, and I think here comes... So we saw Concentrate. And one of those dice removed with a hasty exit. Another three damage to Sabine. Sabine sitting at eight damage. Just needs another three damage to get knocked out of this game. Uh, that's pretty quick. But uh, if Sabine isn't knocked out right now, which she is not, we're definitely going to see that second chance being played out on Sabine as quickly as as uh, Jack feels threatened. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, still 10 health left, just got a couple damage on him, and he still has the Ancient Lightsaber, so he can easily heal those two damage off. So, net result, Obi-Wan Kenobi basically at full health. Sabine sitting at three damage left, but uh, no question in my mind that she's gonna be able to get out that second chance next round. Uh, David, not having the opportunity, just needed. He had the concentrate play. He had the the dice in the field. He had the win right there. I I, I really would uh, almost say that Obi Wan Kenobi had it if he could have taken out Sabine right then. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how the game works. Uh, it does not work in a vacuum. You don't just get to play your side while your opponent sits there and watches, unless of course you're the Sabine player, and then you know your opponent does sit and watch you knock out all your characters <laughs> so he does drop the entangle keeps the easy pickings he's got the impersonate play so uh sabine definitely having plenty of options uh he may save the resources for the easy pickings i think sabine rolls out ezra saves the easy pickings and impersonates and knocks out even knocks out ezra we've seen uh, sabine able to completely win games uh, without ezra not a problem so uh, I, think that's, I think that's the direction you go. Uh, Ezra did roll an extra resource, though, so you could save the easy pickings and just throw a second chance on uh, and heal Sabine, the, heal Sabine back up uh, if she's knocked out. Uh, David uh, looking through the discard pile on Jack's side, trying to see uh, what he may have, what kind of removal he may have. We know he doesn't have another hasty exit. Uh, but uh, for sure, he, uh, David would notice that he has, uh, I don't know if he has played easy pickings. I'm getting a, getting all my wires crossed a little bit. I've seen a lot of games of Destiny, and I'm having so much fun with this. Uh, man, I'm having a blast. All right, so I am seeing uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Obi Kenobi's lightsaber in Obi-Wan's hand. I do see the hyperspace jump. Uh, does not have the resources for it immediately, but... Not necessarily a life or death situation there. Uh, let's see what he does. He rolls out the Obi-Wan Kenobi, takes a shield, 
Ah, that extra shield uh, definitely hurts. Oh my goodness, look at that damage. Nine damage. Oh, and the easy pickings. Oh, the easy pickings on the Obi die. Oh, man. Oh. I'm sure David saw those dice and just went, that is exactly what I needed right now. Knock out Sabine. Knock, you know, deal six damage to Ezra. The game was there, but again... Nothing happens in a vacuum. Uh, looks like David uh, hyperspace jumping uh, was able to get the uh, did ha he did have the resources for that. I uh, I must have missed. I I yeah I must have missed uh, him having the extra resource. But he was able to hyperspace jump uh, after the easy pickings on those dice. Oh what a fantastic what a fantastic roll. What a fantastic uh, play right there. Being able to reset the round. You know, you lose your Obi-Wan Kenobi dice in the beginning, and Sabine still hasn't rolled out yet. Uh, yeah, not a bad call. Not, not a bad idea to just go ahead and hyperspace jump. Uh, you know, got rid of the easy pickings. Uh, Jack now sitting on five resources. I did want to say this during another round. We saw uh, another round previously in the tournament and the championship uh, where both players had seven, eight resources. And we had an interesting... Uh, alternate uh, format or alternate uh, play event pitched where everyone starts with 10 resources at the beginning of the game but you do not get the additional two each round the only additional ones you get are from claiming battlefields uh, resolving dice showing a resource and uh, uh, I think Maz's vault would still would still apply then you could get one resource around but it'd be interesting to see what people would do with those 10 resources at the beginning of the game would we see the Falcons come out and all this cool stuff Anyway, not really uh, here or there, but I was just reminded of that because of how many resources the Sabine player has. It's uh, the Sabine player. Uh, I'm fairly certain Sabine does have an ambush weapon in the discard pile. If not, I'm sure they'll get it out. Oh, we see the second chance roll out. Not gonna, not gonna take the chance on Sabine getting knocked out again. Uh, we definitely had one easy pickings played. Uh, it's one definitely one thing about the Obi Wan Kenobi's dice. Uh, he's very easily easy pickingsable. Uh, he's got a three melee side, a three for one melee shield, shield resource blank. So those uh, uh pretty much if his his die have a very high probability of being able to uh, get that easy pickings to remove his dice. Uh, Jack looking through his discard pile, getting uh, is that the holdout blaster? I think that's a holdout blaster. It's a cool alt art. It might actually be the uh, prize kit one. Not sure, though. Uh, Sabine rolling out. It does get some damage. Uh, four damage going on to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep. Four damage on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Has not rolled out yet, so does not have the shield. Uh, looks like we're going to... Truce and then running interference. So he's going to get the. Uh, so he's going to prevent Sabine from playing any cards, from removing Obi Wan's Kenobi's dice. Unfortunately, Obi Wan just not rolling the damage like he did last time. That was a, a sick roll last time. Nine damage for a single resource was so powerful. Uh, but that's okay. Let's see, uh, Sabine discards and re-rolls, hits the three disrupt for one. I actually have some people resolve the three disrupt for one on Sabine's dice before to great effect. Uh, just getting rid of three resources from your opponent is so devastating at times. Uh, and we, there, see, we get the easy pickings again on Obi-Wan's dice. Uh, David, however, now realizing that, hey, no more easy pickings. Uh, if I do roll out again, most uh, removal cards are only going to remove one die at a time. So if I can roll the double threes, I'm going to be able to get them out and get it taken care of. Uh, the only sad part now is that he's got the Shoto and the Ancient Lightsaber and trying to decide what to do with it. I have known some people to be running guards, um, uh, running uh, the card Destiny. I personally really love the card Destiny. Uh, it allows you to pull any number of blue dice from your pool uh, back onto your character, remove them from your pool, and then get to play a card for free, costing equal to or less than the value of the dice you just removed. Uh, David Plank getting out a second running interference, hopefully trying to uh, make better use of it in the future. 
Uh, Sabine re-rolling, not getting much damage. So uh, Dave, uh, enabling David to claim the battlefield, being able to gain the resource, draw the card so that he can uh, see if he's going to keep it or not. Did not see what he drew. He did get rid of it. It is an overconfidence uh, from my perspective. Uh, looks like we may have gotten a force speed uh, on the Obi-Wan Kenobi, which uh, force speed with either concentrate or alter is just massive. Uh, personally, I love running both concentrate and alter. We did see that uh, David does have the concentrates in his deck. Alter allows you to turn two dice to any side, the, uh, so it's basically another concentrate. The only difference is with alter, you have to pay the two. Uh, concentrate allows you to do just one for a single resource if you like. Alter, though, able to be used on your opponent's dice as well as your own. So some good uh, four speed plays with that, uh, being able to alter and then deal damage if you're already showing it. If your opponent's showing damage, the extra action economy can be very powerful. Obi-Wan Kenobi, however, rolling in, getting two shields, thanks to the Shoto and Obi's ability. Uh, rolling in, getting three damage. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's dice in easy pickings territory again, thankfully. We know the Jack's out of uh, easy pickings. I, I, I really don't mean to pick sides here. Uh, but in the previous game, Sabine Ezra did win. And so I consider David the underdog. And I tend to root for the underdog. I think we all do. Uh, just a little bit. So we've got the holdout blaster on Sabine and the second chance. He wants to leave that second chance there, but he has four resources. Uh, definitely not in any kind of dire straits as far as getting the, getting the money and keeping it to be able to play those cards from his discard pile. The only question, I believe, when you activate Sabine is to make sure that you keep an ambush weapon in your discard pile. I've mentioned this before in previous videos. All right, so he plays the DL44, which does force David to remove a die. Uh, we'll see which one he removes. He removes the Ancient Lightsaber die. Very interesting. Uh, Sabine rolls out, gets a four damage. Nope, three damage. So removes the shields from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Those shields going to be uh, definitely coming in clutch. If he can get that additional show to a lightsaber on Obi-Wan Kenobi, it's going to be huge. Uh, Sabine Ezra, uh, haven't even rolled in Ezra yet. I've, uh, to be completely honest, I have seen Sabine Ezra players uh, roll out, do the damage, and just not even roll in Ezra so that they can keep control of the battlefield, gain the benefits, in this case being extra resources uh, and cards. Uh, I've seen people not even have to activate uh, Ezra at all. However, this player, Dave uh, Jack here, he definitely wants to activate that Ezra. Getting an extra resource and a plus two range damage on Ezra. Whew. Ezra's dice just uh, able to hit like a truck. Here we go. Obi-Wan Kenobi sitting there on an additional five damage now. So Sabine is definitely looking at popping that second chance. If David can re-roll that one more Obi-Wan Kenobi die into the three for one, we could definitely be seeing a dead... Uh, Sabine right here. However, Sabine now showing uh, Sabine Ezra now showing six damage, I think, which is while it's not enough to kill Obi-Wan Kenobi, it's enough to be painful. <clears throat> See what David decides to do. He's thinking. I don't know if he's going to be playing a card. Uh, he picked it back up again. Uh, it looks like David has easy pickings, but easy pickings is spotty yellow character, so it is not a worthwhile card to have at this moment. It would work on the two range for Sabine and the plus two on Ezra. It does ignore modifiers and resource costs, as we saw before with uh, uh, Jack removing the two threes, one of them showing a resource cost. It ignores that. All it's looking at is value and simple. Whew. Oh, this is going to be fun. Now, while Obi-Wan Kenobi will not take lethal damage immediately, uh, that will put him at one health left, so he will need to uh, do the Ancient Lightsaber this round, I believe, in order to try to stay up. However, uh, Sabine is going to be trying to stay alive as best she can. If Obi-Wan could knock her out this round, I think Obi-Wan has a, still has a really good chance of, uh, of taking the day. But I think he needs to try to re-roll that Obi-Wan Kenobi die again to try to get that three for one. He does have the easy pickings there. I think you drop the easy pickings and re-roll that die. Uh, 
also another option would just be to resolve that Obi-Wan die, kick the second chance off, and uh, and then try to re-roll the Obi-Wan Kenobi die just to avoid any mitigation that Jack may have in his hand. Okay, so he does decide to do the Ancient Lightsaber now. He did not have the Ancient Lightsaber die in the field, so I don't think that was a bad decision. Uh, not at all. So, oh my goodness, and look at that. What does he just... Oh, <laughs> look at them go. All right, so uh, Jack ended up resolving the three disrupt for one on Sabine, getting rid of all those resources so that David had to re-roll his uh, three for one damage. He did not have it uh, in his... Uh, he did not have the damage anymore, but he re-rolled, got the base three damage side, he discards to re-roll again. Hits the three damage side. Sabine is out of here. Unless unless Ezra, or sorry, unless Jack, sorry. Unless uh, Sabine Ezra player Jack has removal in his hand. That is a dead Sabine on <laughs> second, second chance goes on Sabine. That has got to hurt. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what are the odds he would happen to have the other second chance in his hand? Now... David is going to be able to knock both of those out, and that is six resources worth of uh, worth of damage right there uh, that Jack is going to have to take. So David does the three. Uh, we kick the second chance off. Uh, now my understanding is David still can resolve the rest of it to kick the other second chance. Yep. Uh, so when you are resolving damage with second chance, you can resolve the initial damage to pop it off and then add the second packet of damage, in, which we saw right here to do that extra five damage. That was the right call. Uh, super, super hard. Oh my goodness. Uh, it just hurts to see those second chances. Uh, when I play at home with my wife, uh, she runs a lot of uh, Red Villain and those Endless Ranks. She always has the Endless Ranks exactly when she needs them uh just just exact perfectness <laughs> so uh sabine activating if she can roll uh four damage uh that's the uh, that's the end of this game and there it is so we once again had uh not not a repeat for sure but definitely another sabine ezra win over obi maz Congratulations to both of these players for playing in the World Championships, and we'll catch you guys next time on the Chance Cube coverage of Star Wars Destiny's World Championship.